Hey, fellow mathematicians. Welcome to the podcast where math is figure outable. I'm Pam. And I'm Kim. And we make the case that mathematizing is not about mimicking steps or rote memorizing facts, but it's about thinking and reasoning about creating and using mental relationships. We take the strong stance that not only are algorithms not particularly helpful in teaching, but that mimicking algorithms actually keeps students from being the mathematicians they can be. We answer the question, if not algorithms and step-by-step procedures, then what? So Pam, right now we're doing a challenge, Woo! right? Love challenge. challenges. Yay, challenge. Right in the middle of a division challenge, but today we're going to talk to pre-K through second grade teachers because we just finished a challenge specifically for them. Oh yeah. And people commented over and over again about how this one particular thing that we did resonated so well. So we decided to bring it here to you. Let's do it. And y'all, we are doing the You Can Change Math Class Challenges. If you have not yet joined in one of our You Can Change Math Class Challenges, uh, stay tuned. We will tell you when the next ones are coming yeah. out. Get on our email list. Know when they're happening. A lot of wonderful, um, free, totally free learning and training and um, we're having a blast meeting people from all around the world so uh, all loving, over lo- all over loving yeah. meeting uh so many different mathematicians around the world um who are learning to teach more and more real math okay so let's this young learner thing this is uh-huh. really fun i mean but kim young learners it's just really all they have to do is like sing the song of counting right yeah. they just need to be able to you know like say the counting words in a row and then they're good to go we can move on we can start doing you know, all addition and subtraction or not, right. right? Like if you teach young learners, you are well aware that there is more to counting and using counting than just knowing the names of the numbers in order, right? Like mm-hmm. we know there's a whole lot more than that. So today we're going to try, we're going to do a really cool thing that tries to give some insight into young learners. Like why is it so complicated for them? To, to be able to do anything with the, they can count. Look, l- listen to my kid. You see, sometimes parents will say, Hey, honey, go ahead, count, count to 20, show them how you can count. And the mm-hmm. kids start to count, and the parents are all proud, and it's all exciting. But then, does that necessarily translate into being able to use those numbers in some meaningful way? Even, even if I'm still in counting strategies, which, as you'll remember from the development of mathematical reasoning, that is sort of our initial kind of, we've got to be able to use counting strategies to be able to sell, solve problems before right. we can move on to additive reasoning. But just singing the song of counting doesn't mean that I've developed counting strategies and that I've, I'm able to use the count. So let's see if we can give some insight into that today. All right, everybody ready? Oh. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a problem. You yeah, we do that a lot, right, Kim? We do some math. Yeah. So today we're going to do a, a, a little problem. Now everybody's kind of relaxed because you're like counting. You know, all right, young learners, we could do it. Yeah, here we go. So everybody just relax right into this problem. Here we go. Ready? C plus M. Yeah, yeah, you heard me correct. The letter C plus the letter M. Pausing, I'm pausing. What? How many of you are looking at your your radio right now? You're like tapping your phone. You're like thinking to yourself, radio. I just said radio. Okay. That was <laughs> you're tapping well, whatever you're listening to a podcast on. You're tapping. You're like, what is she? What? I, I must have missed that number that she was saying. Because she did. It sounded almost like Pam said C plus M. Like the letter. Yes. Yes, I did. Y'all, that can be how kids hear three plus four. Like when you say, all right, what's three plus four? They could hear uh, C plus M. In fact, um, a good friend of mine, when I, I did a little bit of this alphabet thing with them, said, you mean like CM? Like they just sort of took the letters I, I had written on the board, C plus M, and they took the letters and they squished them together. Well, that would be like CM. And they were trying to make a sound of this, like, like what, what, what does it even, like, <laughs> like, what, what does it even mean? Right. And, and, and the point is that kids, if we give them problems like three plus four out of the air. Mm -hmm. And we don't have context behind it. We don't have meaning behind it. We don't have counting strategies behind it. Then they could just think, well, I was going to put those numbers together. Like just scoot that three plus that four, just like they were scooting the C plus that M together because there's not a lot of meaning happening. Yeah. So if you even understood what we were asking (laughs) by saying what is C plus M, I wonder 
how you thought about that. Is it possible that in you- fact, In fact, I'm sorry, Kim, I'm yeah. interrupting you. Maybe we should have a, like uh, a suggestion. Pause the podcast right now. Oh, yeah. And actually yeah. figure out C plus M. Well, if they even know what you're meaning. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I mean, yeah. Keep going. Yeah. yeah. So, so if you understood what Pam meant, C plus M, the correlation between the letter and the number system. So maybe now pause. And I wonder how you're thinking about that. So right. did you, did you count three times? Did you, did you say, okay, A, B, C is one, two, three, and then count all the way one at a time from A to M and then have, gosh, I don't even know what M is, Pam. What's M? Is that, <laughs> is uh, J, J is 10. Oh. J is 10. So J, okay. K, L, M. So it is 13. How do you yeah. do that so fast? Um, I actually know the middle of the alphabet. Oh, you went for the middle. I did. What is the middle? There's 26 letters. So oh. between M and N. <laughs> Sidebar. So if you knew what Pam was even asking, then you may have had some sort of strategy. But I wonder if you counted three times. If you counted to find out what C was, counted to find out what M was, and then recounted all of those numbers together. Like, or like literally then, like count up to 13. Yeah. Yeah. And then add, or, or say to yourself, we'll see 13 plus three is 16, uh, 16. And then start it over from a yes. and count it up to the 16th letter. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So what does that look like in numbers? What we just described that, right? Like one, two, three, four for young learners might say one, two, three, four plus three. If it's four plus three, one, two, three. And then recount one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just like you might have just done for the C plus M, you're saying little kids might do that for a problem like four plus three. Yeah. They would have to recount, like find out where the C is, find out where the M is, and then find out where the 16th letter is, right? Yeah. Like can't all the, like sing the song up. To, and kids might actually do that with, numbers that's right. interesting now we might have somebody on here going i didn't i didn't do that i just thought about c is obviously three so i just started from m like i just counted i just thought like well m m n o p it's clearly p m and then i'm going to go three more so m n o p it's clearly c plus m or are you really thinking about it as m plus c mm -hmm. clearly that's p so you might have counted on from the m but y'all, when we work with teachers, often they'll count on from the C. Mm -hmm. They'll be like, okay, C. And then they'll go, so D is like A. And then let's see, E would be B and F would be C. And they literally start counting on until they get up to, so having started from C, until they then put M more letters on and then they happen to land yeah. on P. Yeah. So that's interesting. You might be like, Pam. Why would they start at C and then get, well, I, I don't know y'all, but they do. <laughs> yes. Well, and they do. And all of us do. And, and many of us did with numbers because we don't really own C yet or M yet, or like, like what, what is even happening with numbers um, as a, as a, as a correlation? Well, and I would maybe add that when it's confusing, when you're not sure, then you read left to right. And so if you're not sure what the question's even asking for you to do, then for some people, they might say, okay, let me start at the first. Which was, which was C, right? Which was C, C. And then uh -huh. add on the rest, right? It's a, it's a little bit elevated to start with the second or the larger. Oh yeah. And the larger. So, so Kim, are you suggesting that if I would have said M plus C, then everybody would have added on from quote unquote, the larger, yeah, yeah, everybody, would... because then if, if I'm reading left to right, I would have done M plus C. And if I'm thinking about adding on mm -hmm. from the larger, I also would have added mm -hmm. M plus C. Mm -hmm. So maybe we gave you C plus M on purpose because we wanted to see, <laughs> oh, and I'm using the sound C <laughs> in both places. We wanted to, to, to view, we wanted to experience whether yeah. you, whether y'all would think about starting from the first number and adding on or starting from the bigger number and adding on. And in either case, whether you started with the C or the M, they, that's a more sophisticated strategy than counting three times, finding where the C is, finding where the M is, putting those together. Because knowing where the M is 
and knowing what comes before or after is cognitively more difficult. You have to Absolutely. keep track of when to stop. So like for, num for instance, for numbers, if we're thinking about four plus three and you hold the four and you have to count three more, then you're simultaneously keeping track of five and one, six and the two, seven and the three. Knowing to stop at counting three more is much more difficult. Because you have to keep track of those sort of simultaneously. You can almost picture a kid go four and I'm like holding my fist. Yeah, four. that's exactly what I did. <laughs> so I'm like holding onto that four. I, I, yep. I own four enough to go four. And then I also own what comes after four enough to go five, six, seven. Yep. But then I stop because I have three fingers up. Yep. And knowing that those three fingers is what I'm supposed to add. And then I stop when I see those three fingers, but I'm, I'm literally saying five, six, seven, that is cognitively difficult. Yeah. Keeping all of that stuff simultaneously happening is difficult. Hey, yeah. Kim, yeah. what's the best way to do that? We just should tell kids to do that, right? Mm. We should just tell them that. Like we just stop counting three times, stop counting out the four, because we'll see kids count out four objects, count out the three, we'll see them count out three objects. And then they shove the two piles together and then they recount all the objects. We should just tell them. We should say, hey, don't count out the four. Just start at four. <laughs> <laughs> How well is that going to work? That's that. Yeah, telling is really helpful. So <laughs> much more experience, right? They need a lot of experience. And you have commented before that when I'm working with a really young learner and, and they're kind of stuck in this idea or, or doing a lot of counting three times, that one of the things that I'll do, especially if they're counting on their fingers, is... If I see them go to make that first count, so let's say again that they're working with four plus three and they're about to count out four on their first hand, I will lightly put my hand over theirs like in a fist and we'll say the number four and then we'll count on together five, six, seven. So just that, that gentle reminder that you know four, you've already, you've already got that first part of the problem that it's four. Sometimes I think kids continue to do the count three times, even when they already um, could be counting on, could be counting on mm -hmm. because they get really fast at it, right? It's, it's just what they do. And they think that that means let me solve a problem means to count three times. And so we need to just encourage and nudge them when we see, we feel like that's something that they can do. They're on and the just, cusp. They're yes, on the cusp of being yeah. able to do it. That's the moment where you kind of go, you say in your head, I can see you're about to count those four. Yep. You just sort of go four, four, mm -hmm, four. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh yeah, yep. five, six, seven. You kind of do that, right. that counting on with them right. just a little bit. Just, just to, And if you do it and they look at you blank, then you're like, oh, we might need some more experience before right. we then try it again. You said that, especially if they're counting on your fingers. And I think what you meant by that is if they're counting on your fingers, you'll sort of put your hand over there. That's hand. when I put my hand on. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I've also seen you, if they're uh, counting out cubes or counters or, or sure. bees or something, <laughs> I've seen you sort of cover it. <laughs> I've seen you kind of cover up those yep. counters, like not even, not even four counters, but you just sort of like cover, like take their hand and go four. And then, and then you drag in five, six, seven, right? Like I've seen right. you sort of like, it's okay. It, I just didn't want anybody to hear that. It's only when they're doing their fingers. Sure. It's just when it's their fingers, you use your hand over their hand. When it's something else, you use your hand over sort of that counter right. to kind of go, Ooh, let's like unitize. Let's like make that first thing, ah, uh, this thing. And then we can kind of count on from there. And then slightly more sophisticated would be if they're not noticing, then I would want to make sure I give students three plus four or, or even a bigger difference between the add ends. I want to give them three plus six and then right. say, okay, three plus six. <gasps> and the kid, I, I start noticing the student be going three, four, five. They're, they're counting on from the three and, and, and they're doing that successfully. They've got the hang of that. Now's the moment where I can go, oh, that's interesting. I noticed over here that that's, uh, so and so started with six. Can you do that? Can yeah. you, hey, so and so, tell us how you did that. Like, like, and have that student share their thinking about how they started right. with the larger number. Notice that the totals are the same. Mm -hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. Maybe model that thinking by actually drawing the tally marks or the fingers or something on the board where they can go, oh, check it out. I have this set and I have that set. What if I moved the sets? Like I just did the, the bigger set first. Does that change the total number of objects I'm counting? Oh, right. And then we have that conversation. And then... I might notice that same student 
counting on from the first number again. And I might then go, oh, oh, hey, remember, remember the car? Like, I'm going to nudge that student. Right. I'm going to be, know your content, know your kids. I'm going to get in there. I'm going to be listening to students solve problems. And I'm going to be nudging that, oh, remember, you know, to count on from the larger. We've had that conversation. You made that realization. Let me remind you. Oh, yeah, right. And then, and then keep encouraging that student. Yeah. Well, and it has everything to do with the community of property, right? That uh, this is kind of a side note, but I, I worked with a sweet boy for quite some time and, it, and he never counted on from the larger number. And I found that so interesting because we had had some conversations. And what I, what I realized was that he did not trust that four plus three and three plus four were the same thing. And so we did a lot of work on a, mem- a number rack, a rec and rec, mm-hmm. modeling that when you flipped it over, oh! that it, it was indeed going to be the same total. And once he trusted the community of property, then he was like, oh, it makes sense to start with a bigger number. I'm going to have to add less onto it. It was, it was such a beautiful moment when I worked with him because I thought, oh my gosh, this is what happens when kids don't trust the community of property. They want to start with the first number every time, no matter what it is. Flip the number rack over. Ow! That is an amazing teacher move. Nicely done to help that student trust the community of property of addition. It gives us an equivalent quantity. That's amazing. Nicely done. I'm so glad that you shared that. Really (laughs) cool. So Kim, kind of what I hear you saying is reading is more than singing the alphabet. And so counting is more than singing the song of the numbers in order. Absolutely. Nicely done. All right, you young learners, who knew all the math for young learners? We think that it is so important to deal with the intricacies of teaching young learners that we've just created a brand new workshop we call Building Edition for Young Learners. It is debuting this fall, so fall of 2021. Whenever you're listening to the podcast, check out Building Edition for Young Learners, our new workshop in our selection of workshops for teaching math K-12. We're really excited to help teachers who teach young learners really get into the details about how we can help young learners really make progress from from nothing all the way up uh, nudging into additive reasoning. So you might want to check that out. So if you want to learn more mathematics and refine your math teaching so that you and students are mathematizing more and more, then join the Math is Figure Outable movement and help us spread the word that math is figure outable.